sorry, Chip, I'm late. I injured myself, but let me tell you, it was, it, I was doing a good deed, I promise, right? So there I was, walking to the fella's studio, I mean, to the, to the detective office, and there was a robbery, an armed robbery. Literally, this bloke, he runs up into the, you know, the real estate agents? Yeah. Yeah, runs into the real estate agents and just goes, don't move. Wow. Couldn't believe it. Can't believe Anyways, it. Anyways, um, let's get into this. Oh my God, is, are we actually really doing this case? We're doing this case. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the case of the Tinder swindler. You might have seen it on Netflix. Brand new show that's popping off everywhere. And of course, the boys have had to cover it. And it's a story of a 31-year-old Israeli billionaire yeah. called Shimon Hayut. Simon Leibai allegedly scammed women out of millions. It's like when I blocked him, I cried. It's, yeah. it's insane what your what brainwashing can do. Simon is surrounded by a lot of people, especially his bodyguard and his business partner. I hate him. This is so horrible. Let me give you a brief description of what happened, who he is, and how this story became so well known that Netflix made a series on it. Everyone's talking about Everyone it. Everyone right is now. talking about it. Anyway, so we've got 31 year old Shimon Hayu, and he pretended to be a man called Simon Levive, a billionaire, the Prince of Diamonds. Okay. So he actually pretended to be the son of a Russian Israeli king, actually called Lev Levive, real person. Yeah. who is very wealthy yeah the king of, well he is the king of diamonds he is a real person anyway he would then go onto tinder and attract you know women he was a good looking car he had a profile with fast cars private jets a very lavish lifestyle you know his tinder profile was attractive to certain women well, well i'm not gonna lie it you, would be why attractive you be? to most women he's yeah. a decent looking bloke he is a decent yeah. looking bloke it looked like he had everything going for him mm -hmm. his life was in order yep um, yeah, there's not really much not to like about his profile. Absolutely, and in the end, he would end up luring these wom uh, women into almost like a trap where he needs to borrow money from them. But it's like the way he does it is... Is elite. This guy is a master manipulator. Yeah, it's fantastic. He would, he, he, he would all it, of a sudden, something of. would go wrong, and we'll get into it, but something would go wrong, and it would throw up a situation where he needed immediate cash from mm -hmm. these people that he was stringing along. And it is fascinating, one, to see how he does it, and then two, just the lengths that he would go to in order to do it. I mean, for the most part, I mean, if, if I was him, I would say, oh, any chance I could get like a, a grand or two, like my, my car's being blocked. But this guy just went above and beyond and he was living a life of complete luxury and it was never on his dime. Yeah, 100%. This man took securing the bag to a whole mm -hmm. different level. Now, this wasn't his first rodeo. He's actually already done jail time for defrauding three other women previously. Actually, in 2011, to avoid fraud-related uh, charges that he had committed in his early 20s, he fled Israel to make sure he didn't get done for that, and he went to Finland, right? Um, but he ended up spending two years for the fraud of three women previously, right? Once he gets out for that, he then comes back to Israel in 2017 and then ends up fleeing Israel again. And this time he goes to Europe, right? Um, at this point, he changes his name from Shimon Hayut mm -hmm. to Simon Levi. Crazy, right? Man. I would have never expected that from him. I mean, look, I the warning it. signs were already there. But he does change his name, and that is actually like a massive part of this because, I mean, I suppose if you're going to Google his current name, there wouldn't really be anything that pops up because that's not what he went by when he was first done for the fraud of those three mm -hmm. women. Now, one of the most highlighted victims in this case is a lady that goes by the name Cecily. But there has been some, some office beef here yes, regarding this name and how you pronounce it because actually in the Netflix documentary, um, the, the bloke Simon actually refers to her as Cecilia, but we've gone online, we've typed in pronunciations and different types of pronunciations for this name and we're pretty confident it should be pronounced Cecily. So we're just gonna stick with that. We're just gonna Bear stick with, with it, yeah. If we've got it wrong, 
We apologize. Yes. But anyway, let me run you through how she went on to meet Simon Levive. So she was, well, she is based in London at the time of meeting him, but she is from Finland. That's when she meets Simon on Tinder. Like we said, amazing profile. They've obviously hit it off. Uh -huh. They start talking. They go on their first date to a hotel called the Four Seasons Hotel. If you know about it, Carl definitely knows Bougie about it. Bougie as hell. Like, trust me, if anyone's ever taken you to the Four Seasons, you know they got the cheddar cheese. Or yeah. at least you think they have the cheddar cheese. Absolutely. It's not for the likes of me anyway. Following that, the date's obviously gone well. Straight away, they jet off on a private jet to Bulgaria for one night. Imagine that. You went on a Tinder date with someone and, and the first thing you're doing with them, well, obviously, besides going to the Four Seasons, the next thing you're doing is jumping on their private jet. Yeah, I I'm mean, sold. I mean, I'm here for the lifestyle, I, baby. I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say yeah. no at all. But anyway, something that was a bit, well, I found a bit strange is that on this journey that they went on, Simon's ex-girlfriend and with, you know, the mother of his child was on this trip. But right, so he's taken a Tinder date yes. on the private jet, that's fine, but he's also brought along his baby mama. Yes. And the baby as well. Yes. So, you know, stretch back sounds a bit okay. odd, but apparently they have a good relationship, that's fine. Fine. They're actually in a car together, Cecily and the baby mama. Yeah. And uh, they're having a conversation, and she's actually telling Cecily how great Simon is, all this kind they're of stuff. They're bigging him up. Yeah, so first thought I get from this is, yeah, she's in on this. Yeah. She's got to be in on this because, you know, you call him Simon for a start. And that's not even his name unless she was also swindled. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Was she originally swindled? There's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of chat about this and you never, really, you never really get to the bottom of it mm -hmm. because nothing ever goes further. But was she, was she part of this whole plan before? But then you, we never hear of too many of the other victims mm -hmm. mentioning. Yeah. The, like Very what, strange like little, the little Is the baby's bit. last name Levi? <laughs> or is it Hayut? I, I don't, yeah, I don't actually know. Listen up here, fellas and Felita, but mainly the fellas. Uh, we have got the Performance Package 4.0. Yes, this is the homies over at Manscaped. They just wanted to send you guys a little message to let you all know that this 4.0 is back on the menu, guys. Now, what they are doing is they're putting together a little package for you, right? And inside this package, you've got the Lawn Mower 4.0 Trimmer, the Weed Whacker, right? The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Toner. Love the Ball Deodorant. Do you actually bang that one, yeah? Yeah. That's a big one. Trust me. Just trust me. Just, just, just trust, trust, trust me on that on one, okay? One. Say no more. Look, the performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold your goodies, right? I have a pair of Manscaped boxers for every single day of the week, by the way, and they are fantastic. They actually are good. They're so good. They literally are. Right, now, first off, the new performance package 4.0 includes the lawnmower, of course, um, and is it, is, it the, is it the best ball trimmer you've ever used? Look, let me put it this way. If you've 100%. ever used, if you've ever used one of like, people, everyone's done it, you used to just use your shaver, just a little wash under the tap, and you used to use it down there. This is infinitely better Let me than tell that. you, let me, let me put a bold statement out there. Go on. This is the Ferrari of ball trimmers. Oh, look, that sounds delicious to yeah. me. Right? Now, um, you guys probably thought that was good, but uh, we want to take your grooming game even further to the next level, right? The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker to chop up your worst weeds up the top of your nose and ears. If you're one of them dons with hella nose hairs, you got nose hairs? Yeah. Oh, every, you do, yeah. and you got and every nose time, hair. every time I get the Weed Whacker up there and I'm spinning it around and I'm It's in a little ticklish though. Yeah, it's nice sometimes, you know, I love, love doing it. It is. Right, now seal the deal with Manscaped's liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, um, the, chip, the one that chip uh, backs, and also the Ball Toner as well for the mid-game ball check. Ah, that is outrageous. I love that, man. All right, guys, Manscaped have even thrown in two free gifts to their performance package, um, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort and boxers to another level. Now, if you guys are interested in this, then you can actually get 20% off and free shipping if you use the code MYSTERIES. What's the code, Chip? Mysteries. Don't misspell mysteries, okay? Please. Yep. You, we want you to get the 20% off and the free shipping, so make sure you use mysteries at manscaped.com, right? Your balls have been through enough this past year. Treat them with the best tools for the job yeah. from Manscaped. Treat them with respect, okay? Amen. Treat him like you treat your mother. The next part of Simon's plan was to actually sort of really rope her in now. At this point, there's a lot of manipulation going on and he takes it to the step where he actually asks her 
to move in together to look around uh, London for some for some lovely places for for both of them to to live in. But keep in mind, they do have a long distance relationship. He's mm -hmm. constantly abroad because he's having these business meetings, mm -hmm. right? You know, he's he's working on this family business, his empire mm -hmm. that he's a part Big of. Big money moves. Exactly. Um, and so what he would also do would be constantly showering her with gifts. You know, he is there to keep up the persona that he has got all this money. He's showering her with gifts. She feels like, wow, this is the perfect relationship. Everything is going exactly how I dreamed. Mm -hmm. And this is where it starts to get funky. And I mentioned at the beginning, there is always that one bit, that one event that happens in every single one of the stories of the victims where he begins to start asking for money. Now, in Cecily's case, um, he said that there was a threat on his life from his enemies. He keeps referring to these enemies, right? That's literally what he calls them. He just calls them enemies. There's no more description or anything about it, just enemies that are after him. So he said he was in the midst of securing a $70 million deal. That is some big cheddar cheese, okay? Yeah. Um, and that he started receiving bullets in the mail, funeral flowers, things like that, threats to his life, right? Yeah. And at this point, he takes it a step further. And he actually calls her and says, my bodyguard's been hurt, he's, like, he's, he's, been, he's been smashed. Um, and he sends her some pictures. Yeah. Right. And you're looking at these pictures going, I mean, this is absolutely legitimate. The, the bodyguard has been hit. Um, and yeah, I mean, that would sell me the story, to yeah. be honest. They were even I would in the no back of an ambulance it. in the pictures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At this point, Simon's next part of the plan is where he now has to ask her for the cash. He says, right, I have to lay low. I can't use any of my cards. I can't get access to money because they're tracking me through my, me using my card and they'll be able to find out where I am. So, Cecily, this is where I need you. I need you to give me some money, right? So that I can, you know, I, I can still spend. He says, he says he's constantly having to pay for his team, right? Obviously he's got the bodyguard, business partner, driver, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so she starts taking out loans. She goes to banks and she's starting to take out all these loans. And, he, and he's helping her through the entire process. You can see it, because he, he obviously knows what, how to do it. He's, he's potentially done this before, right? So um, she, he's step by step, taking it out. And we are talking, bro, she is racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. worth of debt in her mind, thinking he needs this money. His life is on the line. He is he's on the ropes. If he yeah. doesn't get this money, he's going to die. She probably racking up a lot of Avios points or that American Express. The, man, uh, Lord, well, well, she can't, she can't use it. She can't use it because even American Express at this point are going, right, hold on a second. This is a large amount of debt here and nothing is being paid off. She's getting, she starts getting letters and emails saying, we need our money. You uh -huh. took a loan from us. And these are from like loan sharks. So they have really high interest rates. Not the people you want to be taking loans from. No chance. But... The emotional manipulation meant that Simon was getting exactly what he wanted. One day, she's had it. You know, she's had enough. She's finished with this. She, there's been so many false promises from Simon saying he's going to pay her back. The money's coming. He's sending her screenshots of like transfers, uh, but the money's just not coming in. Yeah. And at this point, she has built up a debt of a quarter of a million pounds. And credit that card is fees, every uh, sorry credit card debt of 250k that would have me shaken i mean a lot of people you i mean you just find that you're paying that off for the rest of your life most people would not come out of that hole no i don't like, it, that's yeah. a lifetime's worth of debt yeah. yeah anyway the police have finally got involved she's gone up met with the police she's handing over she's handed over all the conversations to the police and the police obviously looked at it and they've gone emotional con that's what, that's what this is that's what they say an seen. emotional con Roped her in, pulled on her heartstrings, got the money, fleeced her. Introducing Penilla. Now, this is another lady that Simon had matched on Tinder, but a little, it's a little bit of a different story because they didn't really hit it off romantically, or that's what Penilla claims anyway, um, but they were just really good friends. You right. know, she claimed that she loved him, obviously, I guess, as a friend and stuff like yeah. that. They were going on holidays, road trips, stuff like that. So it's a little bit of a different way he's conning her, you know, well, he's obviously he's obviously met her and still feels like you know if I can make yeah. this girl still really 
be part of my life and become such a close friend to the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chip, friends if you were on the ropes, I'm helping you out with some peas. Don't I'm, get any ideas, but I am helping you out with peas. Thank that's you. probably thank the you. same thing Simon's thinking. Now, eventually, that's exactly what happened. Simon got in touch with Penilla and said, look, I'm in big trouble here. Um, he sent her a fake article saying that his dad was in trouble for smuggling, you know, family members were getting arrested, stuff yeah. like this. Things were going down. Even, even, he even said Russia was involved. Russia like, was involved. Like, made it seem like, it's like a, a massive big thing. thing. Well, yeah. a, you know, he's meant to be a billionaire. This yeah. is something that could, you know, could make sense to her. Anyway, he's gone to her and he said, look, my credit cards have been cancelled, stuff like this. I'm going to need to borrow £30,000. Now she to Penilla, she's probably thinking, yeah, that's a crazy amount of money. Yeah. But to you, you could probably pay that back with such ease. You're a billionaire. Once this situation gets it's, sorted, yeah, and, and she'll give it back, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. He actually sent the same images that he sent to Cecily to Penilla of the attack on his bodyguard. So what? The one of him in the back of the ambulance. Yes. You the know, one, he said, oh yeah. So he's, he's selling it, and you know what? He sent it to these two girls. There's probably so many that he's sending it to. Yeah, Crazy. no, I mean these are the t these are, these two are the sort of main ones yeah. in this documentary that Netflix put together. Um, but there's bound to be more, and it's not like mm -hmm. yeah, this guy's only used these photos twice. He's definitely used them a few yes, times. Yes, and then he eventually did go on to send her a voice note, and the voice note said, "Penilla, I'm really embarrassed to ask you, would it be possible for me to borrow thirty thousand pounds?" You giving it over? If I ask you for 30K, you giving me it? If you ask for 30K, I'll give you 30K. Yeah. Yeah, because you give it back eventually. Yeah. Well, uh, you'd ask what you'd think anyways. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Let's go back to Cecily. Now, the last time we spoke about her, we said that she went to the police. Now, the police actually told her, look, we want you to Google someone called Shimon Hayat, mm -hmm. right? And she did. And now she's able to see the first three people that this Shimon had frauded, right? And she looked through the, the, the women's names, she managed to find their names, and she only recognized one of these women on that list. And who was it? It was the baby mama. So he did fraud the baby mama, right? But she was still there on the plane with him, helping him do fraudulent stuff to other women. This is what I what? think's happened. She's figured it out, whatever. Yeah. She's gone crazy. He's gone, look, I can keep, keep you can keep this lifestyle. Just join me on this. Yeah. Or, or she's gone, I'll go and expose that you're doing all this stuff again unless you bring me in as a business partner and I want a cut of everything you make type B. At this point, the police realize they're onto something. So they decide to head to Shimon Hayat's last known address, which is in Israel. So the police fly all the way over there, tried to get some information along with some journalists that are doing a story on this case. And what do they find at his address? His mother, his actual mother, by the way. Right. Right. Uh, but when they go to her and they question her and they say, look, where is he? What is he doing? She seems a bit sketchy. As you, if you she watch does. Right, yeah, she, she seems, seems rattled a bit, sketchy, a bit, doesn't she? As he would. But she claims that she has not seen him in years. She don't know what. She doesn't know what he's up to. She has no. She no involvement. Nothing like that. So apparently, she almost seemed angry. Like, yeah, like he, she, she was did. there. Like this guy. He like that's my she own did. son. He changed his name, and I haven't heard from him since. Now either that or she deserves an Oscar. But I but I buy into the fact that I reckon that he genuinely did just cut all ties yep. with family to go and live this fraudulent life. Yeah, he seems obsessed with that lifestyle. His yep. family probably didn't approve. I mean, well, I hope not anyway. Yeah. And he's going, you know what? Screw you lot. I'm getting that I'm, bread up, man. I'm doing my thing. Yeah. Over in Israel, they did speak to the police there and they confirmed that actually uh, Shimon Hayat is in fact wanted over in Israel. And that's why he wouldn't have come back because obviously he lands in there and he's getting arrested, right? Um, that leads us to the next bit, right? Now there's a fella named Erland, right? And he's a, he's a journalist, he's doing this story. Mm -hmm. And he actually manages to get in contact with Pernilla and tell her everything. Erland obviously knows um, his information from Cecily, so was trying to find other potential victims and stumbles across Pernilla. Pernilla. Tells her all this information, and at this point, Pernilla realizes, I've, uh, I have fallen victim to this scam yeah, as I've well. Yeah, I've been rumbled. Yeah, I, yeah, she was rumbled, right? Um, 
And because she spent so much time with him, and she saw how much he was spending, um, they realized that uh, Cecily was just then the tip of the iceberg, that there could be so many more women than, thus, than just these two, right? And I think watching it, you felt as though, because the guy was constantly traveling, right? He was always on his phone. He defo had loads of women that he was scamming. A hustler, man. After speaking to Pranilla and her explaining her side of the story, they realized that this was one massive Ponzi scheme. What's a now, Ponzi scheme, Cal? Oh, a Ponzi scheme, you ask? Yeah. Well, essentially, in this particular case, he was using money from one woman to then pay for the lifestyle of another one for, to then be able to convince her that the, the same scam, she gives him money and he just keep the money flow just keeps going along and he lives this lavish life, lavish life with all these promises, but the money just keeps moving on to the next girl. Does that make sense? Yeah, man, that's crazy. It is, it is nuts. At this point, Penilla knows everything and she is working with a journalist and a police agent. Now they're trying to come up with a plan to go to nail up, this guy. To nail this guy, to go see if he's right there, the real deal, get pictures of him and you know, figure this whole thing out. Yeah. Now obviously, Simon is trying to figure a way out to keep Penilla in this trap. So he cl- he says to her he's gonna give her a watch. He's got many expensive watches. He tells her one's worth over a hundred grand. So I'm gonna give you the I can't give you cash right now, so instead yeah. I'm gonna give you this watch. Yeah, but his credit cards are tied up, right? Cool. So obviously but What yeah. do they do, Chip? So Penilla goes over to Munich to meet yeah. him. They go for dinner in a very fancy place. Everybody knows Simon there, mm-hmm. everybody knows his name. Uh, they go for dinner. The journalists are waiting in a car park just above the restaurant. They're with the, hiding. With the cameras, hiding. Okay, Penilla is inside the restaurant. She's texting uh, the journalists, letting them know when the right moment is, when mm-hmm. he's coming out. Boom, it happens. She says, right, it's coming out now, he's leaving. Simon walks out of the restaurant, looking all fancy, looking suave, yeah. and there he is. The journalists, they pap him, they get him. Snap, get, snap, 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 snap. They get the pictures, they get everything. They get caught. Simon and his bodyguard, or his friend, have yeah. spotted the journalists in the car park. So they all rush, they get Penilla, everyone gets in a the car, they start driving through the streets of Munich. My really enemies fast. are after me, my enemies so, are something after Something along those lines, but Penilla's playing up, you know, she's pretending, she's in, she's like, why are your enemies coming, all this stuff. Oscar performance from Penilla in this car, by yes, the way. Yes, we've got to give it to her, and eventually they do let her out of the taxi. Yeah, they let her out, but you can imagine she's there wondering, oh my God, do they know that I've set him up here? Do they, do they know that it's me? Is he gonna take me away, kidnap me? That type of thing. Yep. Fortunately, because of her amazing performance, they didn't suspect a thing. Uh, yep. and she was let out of the cab safely. Yeah, absolutely. Also, important to note, the watch. She did actually receive a watch off Simon. Now, first of you know, first spot. I'm pretty gassed, finally. Spot, I have something I'd, I'd, from him of I'd worth value. I'm pretty happy, you know. Maybe it is legit. You never yeah. know, you never know. Um, she takes her watch back home. She takes it to a pawn shop. Of course, it's fake. The watch was what fake, worthless. Fake? What isn't fake about him? Seriously. It starts to get a little bit ugly. As you can imagine, Pranilla's absolutely fed up at this point and she decides to confront him over the phone. And there's actually some really interesting footage, really, and you can hear just how aggressive he starts getting when she starts accusing him. What is it? Can you just tell me the truth? I told you the truth. No, you ha- no, you haven't told me the truth. Can you give me the entire truth? At least I deserve that. I, I told you the entire truth. I don't understand what is the Simon, is the Simon, I lost everything I have. Can you please tell me the truth for once? Like, it's Pernilla, the last... You, Pernilla, you have no idea. My enemy is trying to... Simon, Simon, Simon. Story. But it's weird because if I was him, I would have just hung up the phone and say, right, I'm cutting my losses. uh, She clearly knows what's up. On to the next one. But he's on there and he's still just trying to convince her. And he continues to threaten her saying, if you double cross me um, and just some serious threats. And it would would sort of shake absolutely anybody really. he just keeps and going for it, like. Yeah, I, I, seriously, he doesn't stop, and you can, it's so violent, and I just don't really understand it because, like I said, why not? If I was him, just hang up the phone and just cut. Yeah. You, onto that the, part, onto, onto, the, onto next the next goal for you. Yeah. yeah you sack it off, but um, he doesn't. And at this point, Pranilla, obviously very upset, decides right. We need to have a story here 
from both Cecily and I's point of view to really come out on one of the biggest newspapers in Norway called VG. And they do that, they put an amazing story together and mm -hmm. it comes out, right? And, abs and you can just imagine the traction that it picked up. Unfortunately, they did get quite a negative response. They were being called gold diggers, all this sort of stuff. And no matter what you think about their intentions of being with this person, nobody should be scammed like that. No yeah. one should be frauded like that. Like that, nobody deserves that, right? Now, the reception was horrific. Uh, and, and, and quite negative. But the good thing about this was that a lot more victims came forward because it was such a massive story. So many eyeballs on these photos and more importantly, they saw his face. They could go, oh my God, I know this guy or my friend went on a date with this guy. Oh my God, that's my friend's boyfriend, whatever yeah. it is. It created publicity around his name, his face and this story. Yes, and the actual name, the Tinder Swindler, did come from, from this that article. Story. Yeah. Now moving on to our third victim, Ailey Charlotte. Now she was in Prague when she was actually just scrolling through her phone, scrolling through Instagram. As we all do, mindlessly. Yeah. We are simply drones. We are yep. we are slaves to yeah. anyway, sorry, that's she's, very different. Yeah, she's enjoying life. She's got a boyfriend that she's been with for 14 months. Everything's good for her. She's scrolling through her phone and she sees this article, the Tinder Swindler. She's all hang about, clicks it, boom. The picture is her boyfriend. The Tinder swindler is her boyfriend that she has been with for 14 months. She is also a part of this scam. She's been conned. Anyway, when she was reading the article, remember the videos we were talking about and the pictures of the bodyguard being injured and yeah. in the ambulance? She realized she had also been sent the same pictures. My God. Simon, you fiend. Absolutely crazy. He, didn't, he couldn't even be bothered to new some new uh, and exciting pictures. It was the same ones on repeat. Yes, but things were actually a little bit worse uh, for Ailey because she had actually spoken about how she'd been previously been beaten up by two men. And Simon told her that she was being followed. By, so, by, by, well, let me guess, his enemies? Enemies, you know, yeah, stuff sure. like that. Okay, Simon, man. In total, she actually had given him $140,000. Yeah, so... Like, guys, I, it's important to know, these are not... Like, I know everyone knows that this is not a small amount of money, mm -hmm. but, like, this guy was not just shooting for, like, the tens, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. This guy was racking it up hundreds of thousands, and that's how he was able to continue this Ponzi scheme that he had. That's how he was able to fly on these private jets, live the life that he lived. Yes, so she's obviously confronted Simon, said, look, what is this? Hey, Massive this is article. you, mate. Yeah, Tinder Swindler, starting to make sense to her. Uh -huh. Simon comes back and says, you're not gonna believe it, my enemies. <sighs> so apparently, Cecily and Penilla were yeah. hired by his enemies. Right. It's like a, you know, like a smear job. Yes. Defamation, ruin his character, you know, bring him uh -huh. down. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, he's continuing the entire story. Um, she, but she decides, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm not gonna get swindled, swindled by the Tinder swindler. I'm gonna swindle the Tinder swindlers. Yes, go on. I love this, by yes. the way. This is like my favorite part. This like, is you're, you're conning the con man and I'm here for it. Yes, it's a very good, it's it, bro, it's very good. They, they need to legitimately though, like I know they've done a documentary on she it, they should do a movie. No, they should do a movie. Like this is a Hollywood movie, conning the con man. Anyway, so obviously he's still trying to ask Ailey for money. Yeah. She can't get any money at this time, or, or she's definitely telling him she can't. Yeah. Um, and he starts to say, you know, she goes to him and she says, I tell you what, I work, because she works in the high-end fashion industry. Yeah. She goes, why don't we sell some of your clothes? You know, Simon, he's always kitted out in Gucci, Louis Mate, Vuitton. dripping. The best designer, he's got a lot, you know? And it's probably real, because he's probably bought it with, with the other girl's money. Uh -huh. So he does agree to this, and they go, they meet up, she takes all of his designer clothes, and takes it home. She starts wrapping so she, it up. Uh, uh, she promised him, I'm gonna sell I'm yes. gonna sell your clothes and then I'm gonna send you the money Get so that you money. can keep living. Yes, so, and, yeah. and if, we, you know, it's gonna be thousands, okay? It's gonna be a lot of money. Tens of thousands, Tens mate. of thousands This pounds. stuff is expensive. It's good for him, right? Yeah. So anyway, they do this, he, she gets the clothes, she takes them home. Little does he know, Ailey has zero plans to send him this money. Yeah. She has plans to sell it, that's oh, for sure. absolutely. That's for sure. Well, she needs to get some of the $140,000 that she gave him back in the first place. Yes, so she does. She starts to sell the designer clothes, but she doesn't give him the money. Yes, yes, I love it. I love what it. Literally inject that right here. 
Now, you can imagine at this point, Simon is livid, constantly berating her. Where is my money? Where is my money? And again, this aggressive side of him comes flying out, starts saying the most outrageous stuff ever. And at this point, he's realizing he's been had. Yeah. He's been swindled. Yeah, he's been swindled. Now, when she was actually over there getting all of his clothes, he decides, I want some plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, you know, a little bit, maybe get rid of the wrinkles or something like that. So he goes to the surgeon and the surgeon denies him the operation, says, I'm not doing that because what you're asking for is what criminals ask for. He was asking for his face to be completely reshaped so he was quite literally unrecognizable from the Tinder Swindler article. Mm -hmm. Massive, like that is, and, and she, she was obviously just stood there going, I'm so glad this surgeon has said no. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. he was asking for all sorts, you know, cheeks, eyebrows, the, like, full, the full facelift. He would be unrecognizable yeah. once it was done for obvious reasons. Well, he was a, he yeah. was a criminal. He, so and, the, the surgeon, and, mate, yeah, you were spot on. Yeah. Congratulations. The surgeon, <laughs> surgeon saved this case because if he'd gone ahead with that, this could have gone very differently. Mm -hmm. At this point, there's really not much left for Simon, his, his, the, the flow of money has stopped and he is on the ropes. At this point, he decides he needs to flee to Greece under the name David Sharon. But Ailey was already one step ahead. She knew that he was using this alias David Sharon and what did she do? She hit up the police uh, who got in contact with Interpol and stopped him in Greece for using a fake passport. He's finally been cuffed. So Interpol have got him, okay? He's in the cuffs. He actually gets sentenced. However, it's not a, it's not a very long one. He gets oh, no. 15 months, and these are actually for the crimes that he committed in Israel. So he's not being sentenced for the crimes that he's committed on these ladies. Right. He's being sentenced for the crimes from before. Okay. Okay, and of that 15-month sentence, he serves five months. So after five months, he gets out. He's out. He gets out. You know, oh my that's gosh. it. Gets and out are you telling me record. he's out and about right now? He's out and about right now, a free man. And he's actually running a website where he charges people for business advice. First please class guys, business advice, of please course. Please, guys, please do not get, please do not buy this course or whatever he's selling. I don't know what it is, but do not do it, please. I already bought it. <laughs> no wonder we're in the pits. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so a little bit more news. The bodyguard and the business partner of yeah. Simon never got charged with any illegal activity. Um, and he is very much so still living the lavish lifestyle. In fact, he has a model girlfriend, an Israeli model who recently privated her Instagram. I've already been snooping. Yeah. Trying to figure out the details and find uh -huh. the details. Um, whether or not she knew about this She's until a few days ago when the Netflix show came out. That is a different story. You can actually see in the background of her Instagram pictures. Could you imagine if the first time she had heard of it, this it's whole very thing possible. was the Netflix documentary? It, it, it is, that would be bananas. It is very and possible. And maybe a reason why she went private is because of the whole situation. She's dealing with the whole thing. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, no, it is wild. Um, the victims, the girls we're talking about, and I guess many more, are still paying off their debts. And it is estimated that um, Simon has swindled over $10 million from his victims in total. Crazy Man. amounts of money. Uh, and that one is, final, one final detail, yes. a, a detail that I do like. The production team for the Netflix show did ask him to be in the show if he wanted to come and be in it. He's uh -huh. a free man, you know. He can't yeah. be in it. Uh, and he actually sent a voice note. Oh, yes, the famous voice yeah, note. Yeah, we're going to run that, that out for you oh, right li now. Oh, listen up here. <laughs> I will proceed with the lawsuit against you for defamation and lies and, you know, that everything is based basically on a lie. And uh, that's it. So as you can see, he's, uh, I, I don't think he'll be participating in any documentaries about himself anytime soon. Uh, but I, you know, on the topic of this, look, it is obviously sad that it happened. Um, it is also even more sad that these uh, girls are still trying to pay off their debt. Like I said, it is a lifetime. I, we did see a GoFundMe set up. Yes. We don't know how legit it is, though. So do uh, if you Be are cautious. thinking of donating, then please do your research into that. Yeah, they've raised £30,000 so, so far. far. So if it is legit, good on them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the good news is as well is that Cecily and Pernilla are actually still mates and they go on holidays together, mm -hmm. which is obviously lovely. Maga and that. Ma yeah, I wonder if they would go Maga. I'm not too sure. Probably not. Um, but yes, look, it is, um, it is an absolutely mental story. And if you guys did enjoy this, then please do leave, a, um, leave us a little comment 
what do you guys think about it? Because there are a lot of conflicting sort of opinions. Some people, yes. some people really are like quite harsh on the on, on the two women, um, or the, a lot of the women, clearly. But uh, yeah, let us know. And of course, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all of that good stuff. You guys can listen to us over on there if you ever want to do that. Yes, sir. What do they have to do? They hit the hit the what hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That means you won't miss us every single Monday at six p.m. And we'll see you next week with a new case. Yeah. Now let me give you a uh, let me give you a brief. <laughs> My hands are sweaty. I get nervous. <laughs> let me let tell me, me about this story. Chuck. <laughs> okay, let me give you a brief description of what this story is about. Okay, so we've got thirty. I'm almost there. <laughs> we've got thirty-one-year-old Shimon Hayat. Start, start and again, that's disgusting. <laughs>